Hi, I'm Tim, the cheap 3D printer. A few days ago, you saw me open up a box from Maker Geeks. It was my very first box of 3D Geek Box. That I get two rolls of filament, I get some other stuff that goes along with there for $29.99 a month, which to me is a pretty good deal. That's about $15 per roll of filament. And so today I want to talk about one of those rolls of filament that I got. I've been able to print a boatload of things and uh, so I want to share it with you uh, today. This is that roll of filament. It is the Maker Geeks uh, Crystal Series PLA Translucent Purple. It's a new item for them. It's uh, exclusive to those that get the uh, 3D Geek Box for now and uh, it, they will be releasing it to everyone else. Um, here's that, that color. You can see that in this camera over here. Um, it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I can't seem to smell it right now, but it, when it's going, it, it seems to have this really sweet, uh, almost candy-like smell to me. So um, I love it. It's good stuff. Uh, so I wanted to show you some of the things that I made uh, with this uh, Crystal Series uh, PLA. The first thing that I did was, of course, uh, go with Benchy. And um, let me tell you this. This tells you that the nozzle temperature needs to be 235 degrees. That is hot for PLA. That is really hot for PLA. And so I did try one at 235 degrees. And uh, this is the Benchy at 235 degrees. He's not terrible. Um, the hull of the ship looks good. There seems to be one little error with extrusion right here. Um, the, the hull doesn't look terrible, but then when you get up to where it's doing the bridging and the smaller areas, you can just see it's too hot. It's just too hot. So, um, 235 for this seemed to be just a little too warm for um, for this Crystal Series Purple PLA. So, I bumped it down to 220. Still thinking that's a tad bit on the warm side for PLA. Um, actually, sorry, I put it at 225. Um, still thinking, hey, it's a little bit warm, but that's 10 degrees less than what it was. And um, this did a great job on the hull also. Um, I would venture to say that this is probably a little better on the hull. Um, again, still some problems with uh, the smaller areas and where it bridged. You can see some of the uh, hairs in there, the stringing uh, that it did. Um, but overall, not too bad. It's definitely better than 235. You can see that. Um, so I did not print any more benchies than that. I just printed the two, but um, I decided to use 220 degrees uh, for what I was going to print. So I printed a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff. I decided to download a uh, wavy vase. Um, I actually downloaded this uh, model for the red PLA, which I've already talked about. Um, and I decided to upscale it a little bit for this purple. It's in vase mode. It really did a phenomenal job on this. Uh, absolutely beautiful. My wife is gonna use this as a pin cup. Um, so she's gonna take that back to her office and she's gonna put pins in there and keep it as a pin cup. It's a very nice uh, model. I printed off um, this little guy. Whip the robot. He comes, uh, he prints as he is. Um, he actually prints seated down and uh, with his head kind of down. You break him apart and he has fully motional arms, fully movement head, legs, everything. He turned out pretty well. The supports, he has supports built into his model down underneath his face right here. And um, they came off a little bit rough, not terrible, but a little bit rough. And so you just need to know that maybe if you bump the temperature down just a little bit more, um, it might 
it might do even just a little bit better. Um, but he turned out fun. As a matter of fact, my kids saw him. My wife saw him and said, that's mine. I uh, said, okay, it's yours. And uh, my kids saw him and said, hey, make us one. So I printed one in a, a blue ABS for my son because um, I have blue ABS and he likes blue. And I scaled that one up just a little bit larger. And I scaled a one down a little bit smaller, made it in a little pink for my daughter. And actually the, uh, the pink PLA, uh, which is also from Maker Geeks, we're going to talk about that in another video. Uh, but that pink PLA, I'm going to print a whole bunch of those little robots, and that's going to be her uh, Valentine's uh, Day thing for her class. So this little robot turned out well. He's, he's pretty cool. Um, I like him a lot. He's fun. I'm going to print some more of him and uh, just keep him around. He's kind of fun. He's cute. So... Um, then I decided to print... Uh, this guy, this, I was looking for a chameleon and, uh, I found this, it said it, I didn't read all the instructions. It said that it was for a multiple extrusion, uh, printer. And so I printed him and then tried to print some of his other pieces. I tried to print, print this back spine and I couldn't get that back spine to go in. So he's just going to stay like this. The eyeless, uh, the zombie chameleon and he printed well. Um, I'll leave a, a link to all these models down in the, um, in the description. He's a, just a fun little guy. His supports, again, the supports were pretty rough to get off and uh, to get out. So, um, so he's got some roughness in his mouth from the supports that were in there and some on the bottom of him here. The, the supports were a little tough to get off. Um, so, yeah. Um, I printed this... Uh, Heart. I can't pronounce what the name of this heart is. It's some French thing. Coors is something or other. It basically means um, like twisting heart or something of that sort. It prints in place like this, and then you break these apart, and uh, and it will spin. And it did a good job on this. Um, I was easily able to break everything apart. There was no problems there at all. Easily came apart. Um, you have to run around a few times to kind of get all the little burrs off to make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, but a very nice little model. This was uh, Valentine's Day thoughts. Valentine's Day is coming up in just a few days, so I was thinking about Valentine's and printed this little heart. Then we went to Adelinda and decided to print uh, Adelinda. I like to use as much of my build plate as possible, as much as my build volume as possible. So I decided I was going to try and build Adelinda as big as what I could fit uh, on my printer. Adelinda is supposed to print without supports, and uh, which I did not put any supports. I started printing Adelinda, and uh, she got about this far. I'm sure she could be printed better if I had put better settings in, maybe if I had cooled her down a little bit. She did not fail at this point. I actually stopped the print, and I'll tell you why. Um, here's her feet, her front feet. Um, if you look here, I just wasn't happy with the print, so I stopped it. Um, if you look here, you can see the bridging wasn't real good. I was looking for a nice print, and it, it, was, just, it was just okay. Um, if I would have cooled the temperatures down maybe a little bit, if I would have um, paid attention to what I was doing a little more, maybe a few more walls uh, to give some more support in there as it was going up, it would have printed better. Um, but it didn't. And the real reason that I stopped it, the, the full reason or the final reason that I stopped it, I had seen this, and I'm going to show you this on one of the small ones, but this little string right here had printed on that large one. And so I thought something was wrong. I thought it had messed up. So I stopped the print, decided to print it smaller, and it printed with that same string. So there's something in the model that's telling my, or something in the slicer that is telling my printer to extrude a bunch of filament right there and keep going. And I don't know what the problem is. But came back to bring Adelinda back to her normal size, 
she printed. I set her up to print as I went to bed at night, and I woke up to a gimpy Adelinda missing a leg. Um, the one foot had detached from the build plate. It was my own fault. Um, I use blue masking tape. I usually put some uh, uh, stick glue on there also. I didn't do it this time and her foot detached and so now we have tripod Adelinda instead of quad pod, quad paw Adelinda. So uh, she's a tripod but she uh, she's beautiful. Uh, she turned out well and was very happy with her. So because I wanted an actual full model of Adelinda, I printed her again. And this time, her feet stayed on. I glued them a little, glued, used this glue stick a little bit. And it did print that little string that I was telling you about right here. It also printed one on the back back here. I have no idea what these two little strings are. Uh, maybe if someone else is printing this model and it's doing the same thing, maybe you can let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know uh, what's going on with it. Uh, one thing that I did notice with this filament, um, and with my printer in particular, is that the tips of the wings aren't the greatest. Um, I don't know if it was cooling. Um, I don't know if it's just the temperature of this filament is too hot for it to do small spots. But, uh, but it did not do very good on the wing tips. Um, other than that, she's absolutely gorgeous. Um, the infill, because this is a translucent uh, purple, the infill, you can definitely see the infill inside. Um, you can't really feel it, but you can certainly see it, which is kind of interesting. It makes it look like she has veins all over her body. Um, so it's an interesting thing. But uh, Adelinda is very cute. She will go in my office along with some of my other prints that I have. And uh, eventually people will be asking me where all those prints came from. And I will tell them that I printed them on my cheap 3D printer. And so that was Adelinda. The last thing that I printed, I printed just the other night. And um, I was waiting to get some green filament to do this. But I decided, you know what? I'll do it in purple anyway. And that's Omnom. Um, Omnom is from the game Cut the Rope. He's a cute little guy. And he turned out really well. Again, the supports were difficult to get off. Um, I did get, get them off. They came off fairly cleanly, but they were difficult to get off. The one that I did have a problem with was right here on his head. And you can still see I left, I didn't get all this cleaned off here. Um, when I was breaking off the support, I broke his little tip off. So that's glued back on with just a little dab of super glue and I can't even see where I glued it. It did such a good job. So, turned out well. So, Crystal Series PLA from Maker Geeks. Turns out very nice prints. Um, you may want to fiddle around with the temperature a little bit more, maybe even go a little bit lower than 220 to see if those supports will come off a little bit easier and a little bit cleaner. But it lays down well. It does awesome. It makes some very beautiful prints. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And there's nothing really that I can complain about except for except for those supports. So if you want to get some, I'm not sure when this will be available to the general public, but uh, when it does come out from Maker Geeks, you should pick up some Crystal Series uh, Translucent Purple PLA uh, for your own prints. And maybe if you get to it or if it's available right away, you might be able to get it in time for, thank for Thanksgiving, not Thanksgiving, for Valentine's Day. Hopefully you can get it in time for Thanksgiving. Maybe in time for Valentine's Day, you can make some beautiful prints like this twisting heart. Um, or maybe you can make something else beautiful for your loved one. Other than that, have a great day. and We'll see you next time.